Welcome to the Flute 360 podcast, where we incorporate a panoramic view of flute-related topics. I am your host, Heidi K. Begay, and this is episode 56, Academic Highlights at Texas Women's University's Flute Pedagogy class. Today's gold sponsor is brought to you by the Interactive Flute Retreat. Join Project Trio at the 5th Interactive Flute Retreat, an all-inclusive event on the private shores of South Haven, Michigan, August 16th through the 19th, 2019. The retreat is a unique opportunity to continue learning and growing in a peaceful environment with world-class instructors. Walk away rejuvenated, improve your skills, and form memories in a picturesque location. Registration is now open. Please visit interactiveflutretreat.com. Welcome everyone to another episode of the Flute 360 podcast. I am Heidi and I'm here today at the beautiful campus of Texas Women's University and I am talking with the exceptional flute pedagogy class. It's a graduate class and the professor is Dr. Danielle Woolery and we have here today a total of four students who are all master's degree students and I'm here to pick their brains about their academic year. More specifically, we have decided that we would like to showcase and highlight the very unique music department here at TWU. They were sharing with me some highlights, and that is the assistantships at the school and also this class and what it has taught them. So those are some things to listen into uh, today's episode and Without further ado, we are going to dive in and talk to these wonderful students. Welcome, everyone. Hi. (laughs) Thank you so much for inviting me to your campus. And in these two short, I say that, but two is not that short, two short hours being with you guys, I have learned so much from you. And I just thank you for your very inviting and welcoming hearts. So thank you for the invitation today. Thank you for being here. (laughs) We're excited that you're here. Yeah, Yeah, definitely. Thank you so much. So without further ado, I have talked enough today. You guys have the floor and I cannot wait to hear and uh, for you to share with the community the things that you are learning in this course. So, um, Professor, if you could tell us just an overview of the course and some of the things that the students are learning, and we'll then talk to the students. Sure. So, this is actually a two semester sequence of the classes for music pedagogy. And we really try to teach different concepts. We delve into teaching methodologies and then how to apply those into actual lesson situations. On top of that, we really want to provide marketable skills. So in addition to the teaching and and teaching lessons, we're also looking at how do we create resumes? How do we create, um, you know, studio lesson handbooks? How do we succeed in a job interview? So those other marketable skills that are sometimes overlooked or, or other things that we try to apply. Nice. Yeah. And they are definitely skill sets that we need. Yes. Yeah. I mean, you can't just play that C major scale 50 times a day, you have to be able to go into that interview and and be able to communicate well. Yes. Yeah, great. So let's talk about, you guys were kind of toying with the idea and, and wanting to share just the lessons that you're learning in this class and how you can see it being a very useful resource for years to come and as you are diving into your new careers. Let's talk about that. What are some takeaways uh, from this course that you can see how it's going to easily be applied to your careers? Well, one of the things that is first on my uh, on my mind is an assignment that we're actually working on right now. It's an annotated bibliography of um, when we started with beginner methods and when we were supposed to go through all 
sorts of uh, beginner methods that were available and write annotations about them regarding the sequencing and things like that um, so that we could have a resource guide that we could look at and compare and say, okay, here's all of the resources available. Uh, what's the, what are the differences? What are the similarities? What do we like? What do we don't like? That way when, we're, when we are in teaching situations, we have some, uh, it's like a quick access uh, it's easy. It's, otherwise, it's overwhelming to look because there's so many methods books out there. Mm -hmm. So that's that's one of the things we're doing. We're going into uh, beginner, intermediate, advanced method books and etude books, and we'll eventually get to scale books and things like that. And it's all going to be in one document for us to be able to look back to and reference and even evolve over time. So, what a great resource! Yeah. yeah, and you will definitely be referring to that. Day in and day out, for sure. That's excellent. Thank you yeah. for sharing that. Anybody else would like to share along those lines? Yes. Yeah, so one of the projects that I really enjoyed this semester so far, we don't really think about it that much because we're students, but recommendation letters. What do we do when we get asked to write them? Uh, so one of our assignments was to write one for this perfect student that we might have and go through, highlight all of their strengths, make a position that they're applying for, either an internship, grad school, whatever it may be. And then we also had to write one for ourselves. Hmm. So doing more of an introspective look at what we do well and highlighting those things for ourselves really was eye-opening and harder in some aspects, but a lot easier in other aspects as well. Great. Oh, that's wonderful. And shameless plug, I think one of my series I talked about how to ask somebody, a professor or a mentor, to write a recommendation letter for yourself. I had not thought about the reverse. That is beautiful. I love that because now you are the teacher. <laughs> what do you say about Jane Doe and how do you format that well? Brilliant. I love that. I'm going to have to come back and Get that lecture and <laughs> take some notes from Danielle because I need some lessons on that. <laughs> Great. Anything else along these lines that you guys would like to share? I think something that I appreciate from this course is we explore our teaching methods and evaluate our teaching methods through some of our readings. So our reading guide is through some of what that particular teacher does. And then we try to practice those or you explore those ideas in our personal teaching. And that's helped a lot, like bouncing ideas off each other, seeing what works, what doesn't work, what is not working and why is it not working and allowing us to ask questions in a safe environment mm. for people that we care about. Nice. Mm -hmm. And that supportive group and environment that's, you're, you know, you feel okay to be exposed and, and to dive in. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I actually have something to add to you. And I forgot to introduce myself. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. That's totally fine. So I'm Caitlin Rose, and I'm in my last semester of my master's degree at Texas Women's University. Mm -hmm. And so we were touching on the supportive environment that we have. I think that's also one of my favorite things about this class is it's happened several times where someone has come to the class, like, with uh, an issue that they're having in their own teaching or with students or a situation and we'll kind of discuss it together. Mm. And that's a really nice way for us, especially somebody who's not encountered that situation yet to be able to figure out, okay, well, what, what would I do in that situation? Or if you have been in that situation, you can share what you did, what worked when you did that, what didn't work. And in that way, we're really able to support each other even more so because you're opening up about problems and being open to suggestions from our peers. So, Oh, wonderful. And just think like this dynamic and these uh, friendships and uh, relationships you're forming are going to just, and you already know this, go beyond this class and you'll be able to have, you know, that colleague to pick their brain and to constantly have that professional relationship where you know, oh, I could go to so-and-so, you know, from that class and ask them with, non-judgment or because, you know, when you get to being a professional teacher, you're going to come across all sorts of crazies. You're going to be like, what is that with the embouchure? I had no idea. And so my friend Joshua, it's, you know, he wasn't very used to teaching beginners and he knew that I had some um, expertise in that. And he's like, what do I do with this and that? And 
I was like, oh, okay, I can kind of give my little two cents here and there. I, I kind of know how I can guide them a little bit. And that's what you guys will be for each other. And so that's really nice. Anything else about this course in general that you would like to mention before we go on to the next topic? Yeah. And like Caitlin, I forgot to introduce myself as well. I'm David Wright. I'm also in my last semester in the pedagogy program. Uh, one thing that's really great about this program is that we spend one year on literature. So talking about flute literature, methods, all that fun stuff. And then the next year is all pedagogy based. So learning teaching methods, teaching private lessons, the pedagogy of teaching private lessons, uh, we focused on a lot last semester. So having those hands-on skills that when we go out into the real world and hopefully get that teaching job, we have those materials to look back on and know the literature for students, uh, not just solo-wise, but method books, and be able to troubleshoot all those different aspects that we're going to come across that we don't really see in ourselves, but we will see in students that we interact with. Nice. Yeah, little fun story. When I moved into my Fort Worth apartment here, because of all those food literature binders and pedagogy binders that accumulate, we had to go to Target and buy a special bookshelf just for those binders because I referenced them every day, if not every week. And so I keep hearing that theme come up in, mm -hmm. in y'all's conversation. So it's very true. You will be referencing it. <laughs> and that's great. What a huge accomplishment for you as their professors to give them those resources. So that way they, you know, they may not remember everything. That's okay. But, oh, yeah, we talked about that somewhere spring semester or whatnot. And they can kind of go back and uh, leaf through their notes. Yeah. That's definitely the idea behind that and something that I find myself as well, going back through my notes, even from my undergraduate degrees and all the way through my graduate work. So it was so helpful for me. I want them to have that same opportunity as well. Yeah, yeah. very smart. Anything else on this topic? A lot of what I like about this these courses is that it's so individualized to ourselves. We talk about a lot of introspective things and ways of teaching. Um, because if one way is going to work for me, it's not necessarily going to work for a peer. It's very personalized and it's not cookie cutter. Mm. You know, it's very like to the, the job market and like real life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And just think about when you are forming those resumes and CVs, you know, your mentors here at TWU, what they're doing is helping showcase those unique uh, accomplishments mm -hmm. and saying, oh, look at this and, you know, highlighting it so that way you do stand out and, you know, you have that, like we were talking about earlier, that unique thumbprint. Mm -hmm. That's great that you're seeing how um, things are shifting to, to accommodate the individual. How wonderful. Right. And where we fit into the community as well. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. yeah. And so much of our conversation post Flute 360 talk earlier was such a very honest and vulnerable conversation with everybody has that place, you know, and finding it. And mm -hmm. I think those definitely, that conversation was definitely a moment for me where it's like, where's the recorder button? Why isn't it going right now? Because it, people, I mean, these are real life conversations, you know, and for people to kind of be a fly on the wall and just sit in and listen those conversations resonate with people. And so I was thinking, oh, man, where's those microphones? Because it's such an awesome dynamic that we had earlier. So, yeah, thank you for, for bringing that up again. That's very well said. Thank you. Yeah. So, you know, kind of going bird's eye view, we're talking about a, a specific class, and we're talking with um, graduate students in this class. But they brought to my attention that the pedagogy department – here at TWU is very unique. Can somebody shed some light on that and, and bring the listeners to full speed? Yes. So getting a degree in instrumental pedagogy mm. is actually something that's kind of unique that okay. not a lot of uh, schools have it around the country where you can go and study flute pedagogy. It might be something you might have a class, but a lot of times you're not going to actually get to major in that. And so this is why they actually have um, the two-year sequence of, like David, I think, was saying, you know, we spend about a year focusing on literature and a year focusing on teaching. And really within that, as 
Caitlin was kind of touching on, most of our students, our pedagogy students, have graduate assistantships of some kind, Mm -hmm. so they get some more of that hands-on kind of teaching experience and things like that. Great. So I guess what you guys were telling me earlier was there's an actual degree Mm -hmm. in this, and And, what you had said, Danielle, was I can relate to it. Like, for my DMA, we took one semester flute lit and one semester flute ped. Done. Right. You know, and so to offer and to highlight that, I think that's why it's so neat to do these campus tours, because that's very unique to TWU. So if there's somebody out there who, you know, it resonates with them and they think, oh, my gosh, that would be perfect for me. I could fit into that so easily. And I want to dive into that more and learn more about that. Here's a program for you. And so thank you for bringing that to my attention. I did not know that TWU offered that. How exciting. I think one of the things that drew me to the pedagogy degree is um, I've always loved teaching. It's kind of something that comes really naturally to me. And um, but I, and I started out my undergrad degree. I actually started out in music education. You know, they teach you how to be a band director kind of a thing, in, at least in Texas. And I realized close to the end of it, right before I was about to start all the education courses, that I did not want to be a band director. I love to teach, but I love the flute too much. And practicing other instruments is something I'm not interested in. I'm terrible at every other instrument. I'm just basically a flute player. And, and that's okay. And so the pedagogy degree, it, it just solves all those problems because I can focus on the flute mm. and I get to play a lot. It's really a pedagogy and performance degree, we uh, we get enough performance credits to satisfy that degree as well. And so, so I get to play a ton, but I also get to teach a lot. And I get to do a lot of it in practice. And that's that's what I, under, under the tutelage and the mentorship of, of Dr. Woolery and Dr. Youngblood and all the other faculty who's also so supportive here. That's what I love about it. I get to focus on the flute, but I also get to teach. Hmm. So... Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And what better way to learn as you go with that mentorship, like you mentioned, because I found when I finished my master's in 09, I never had taught a sixth grader before my life. And here they're giving me 30 sixth graders to teach. I'm like, okay, just blow. (laughs) Why why can't you make a sound? I mean, come on. (laughs) But to have to, you know, do it from step one to give them tangible steps to form that embouchure, to talk about the airstream. I wish I would have had more of that experience before I had to do it on my own. You know, and of course, life is a great teacher. (laughs) And I learned as I went and it turned out to be okay, but not through a lot of sweat, blood and tears where I thought, oh my gosh, am I ruining these kids? You know, but to have that, to experiment and to have that mentorship to guide you in that safe place that you guys were talking about earlier, that's incredible. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's been it's been a real blessing for me. I it's bittersweet that I'm graduating this semester. I'm gonna miss it so much, but I'm I feel ready to move on and like I can actually make a life be, being a musician, which is something that we've all experienced. The oh, that's nice, you know, <laughs> yeah. kind of mentality. So yeah, I actually feel like now I can handle it. I, I can. There's something out there, and I, I feel like I've been given the tools to figure that out, whatever that is. And I have the resources and the people to support me to to help along the way. Oh, how nice. And what a beautiful testimony to you (laughs) as a teacher and (laughs) and to the department, you know, like just to hear your students so well articulate to express these ideas and, you know, the lessons they've learned along the way. I'm sure I just know how proud you must be. Absolutely. Yeah, Yeah. I couldn't be prouder of them. And they make my job a joy to come to work every day. And every Monday is the highlight of my week. (laughs) The longest day. The love is fun. For sure. (laughs) Yep. (laughs) Earning that next latte or that next hot chocolate. Five extra credit points to everybody in the the room for their next test. (laughs) So then kind of bringing the scope a little further out, assistantships were mentioned. Let's talk about the unique atmosphere and environment in which you all get to be an assistant within this department and what that's taught you and the skills you're learning to help you with your career. 
Well, one of the requirements is that you have to have 18 credits of graduate level courses to be a teaching assistant. So pretty much all of us get to teach the second year when we're in the pedagogy class and putting in that hands-in work that we're learning in the class as well. I had the unique opportunity to come in right away teaching since I had a master's degree before I started. So I got to teach flute lessons. Uh, one of my degrees was in multiple woodwinds. So I taught an oboe lesson uh, for a student for a year, which was a whole different experience, but definitely very rewarding. Uh, a lot of things that correlated between flute and oboe and all the other woodwinds. And just seeing the student grow was absolutely phenomenal. One of the other duties that I got to do was help with the woodwind methods class. Mm -hmm. So incorporating some of that other multiple woodwind skills and also helping with the instrument inventory and instrument checkout for students who need instruments. Oh, cool. Yeah, so going back to what the Flute 360 presentation was earlier, just this idea of changing and stepping into these different roles and different shoes and wearing different hats. And you're, mm -hmm. you're getting a taste of that now before mm -hmm. the quote unquote, real world. Yeah. Yeah. How exciting. Mm -hmm. Anybody else would like to share? So I, I've loved the opportunity to work with undergrads because I, I have taught middle school and high school before, but having that opportunity to teach college age students has just been awesome. I also grade for a class and I've never really done that before. So it's great to have that opportunity to an experience to um, know kind of like how to do it and how to manage your time to grade. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And we all help out with the flute studio class and we all pick a different topic and it's on a rotating schedule. But we can teach basically what we're called to teach pretty much that week. And um, that's really been an awesome experience. Mm -hmm. Neat. So you're yeah. giving this environment to explore and to create, and it sounds like there are some parameters, but <laughs> they're also kind of unleashing you and saying, go for it. Right. Yeah. You know, that's good. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. excellent. You need to get your feet a little wet again before the real world, you know, like stepping <laughs> out. Because, I mean, you need that experience and to build, you know, that confidence and to, to figure it out and figure out, well, how would I explain that? How would I put that together? Mm -hmm. How would I, you know? And then, of course, it's always a learning process, but to get not just a taste of it, but it sounds like you guys are like being like deep water, you know, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. go for it, you yeah. know, baptized in fire. It's not just like a little, <laughs> little like, boom, yeah. you know? Yeah. Yeah. That's yes. excellent experience. Yeah. We've had a lot of guidance through that too. Yes. So we're not just thrown into the deep water without a, a life yeah. 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 <laughs> So that's good. You don't right. want anyone yeah. drowning. Right. Oh, no. <laughs> no, yeah. Yeah. Come close. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, Couple times, yeah. yeah. But. Oh, that's wonderful. Any other thoughts or ideas that you would like to share about your assistantships? Yeah, uh, for me personally, it's been an opportunity to kind of taste different, different things mm -hmm. and try them out. One of the things that I do is I, I coordinate... Uh, student volunteer performances with the Denton State Supported Living Center. We have a really cool, unique program with them where students go and perform voluntarily for the residences and the staff. They don't get out a whole lot. The residents especially, you know, they sometimes don't get a lot of visitors. And so we get to bring them music. And I, I have the joy of being able to coordinate that. And I've it's been really fun being able to streamline that. And I feel like it is, it's a machine now. And I'm so proud of it. And I'm like, okay, whoever gets this next... Please keep it up. I yeah, put so much work into this. Yeah. But that's a really unique thing that I've been able to do is learn how to coordinate those and how to be the, the middleman between them and our students and make sure everybody's doing what they're supposed to do. And it, that's been really interesting for me. Um, you know, I've been able to, this semester, I'm assisting in our music history class, mm -hmm. which is really nice experience um, getting to see how that could be taught, you know, because I've taken my own, but everybody teaches differently. And so that's that's been really fun too. Uh, it's just the array of opportunities that we've got. And they kind of, we, we help to fill in the gaps of where they need people, mm -hmm. which is, it, it can be a lot sometimes, but it's how you learn time management. Sometimes mm -hmm. you just you just have to figure it out and you have to do it. And it's given this opportunity to try out a whole lot of different things. 
Hmm. So, I mean, it's just like resume building, <laughs> you yeah. know, just tack it on the list. But it, we've all, I know I've learned so much by doing all of these different things, figuring out how to balance it all mm. with also my, my own school and my own practice and try to figure that out. So, yeah. Um, what I hear with the, when you were organizing and talking about your experience organizing that event and saying, making sure everyone's on the same page. Just this thought screaming in my head of, you know, future NFA president, right? <laughs> you know, that's literally like, you know, mm -hmm. it, and I don't know if you guys have been involved or I'm sure you've heard of it, but just the Texas Food Society, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, we need people like you yeah. who are uh, diligent, organized, hardworking, intelligent to fill in these executive and festival committee positions, you know, like secretary and treasurer and things like that. And getting a taste of that and then actually putting on the second largest flute festival in the nation mm -hmm. after the NFA, that's a big deal. There's a lot of attention on it, mm -hmm. you know, and there's people like Carol Winsenses and Amy Porter's coming to this. And so organizing a local regional event and then stepping up to maybe more national and then NFA, which is more international, you know, again, these are building blocks. Mm -hmm. One of our recent graduates, Jacob Wright, is actually one of the co-chairs for the TFS festival oh, this year. Yeah. So he's doing exactly that. He's yes. had that all of that organizational mm -hmm. stuff here, and now he's he has the joy of doing that with TFS. So perfect, it's exciting. Well, I will say, as treasurer of TFS, <laughs> Jacob is doing a wonderful job. Good. So. <laughs> Happy to hear. <Yeah. laughs> Full circle. Good deal. Yeah, you guys know it's you know flute community is so small. And just right there, like, yeah. you know, there that's your connection. That's my connection to Jacob. And we're all in this together. You know, we're all, we're making something um, much bigger than ourselves and, and helping out the community and providing a resource. Yeah. So that's exciting. Yeah. Anything else about assistantships that you guys want to share? Gio, is there anything you would like to add? <laughs> the many hat wearer yeah, <laughs> right. um, just even coming into the building today i saw you running around so yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> well leaving tech i left our family and coming to texas women was like getting a whole bigger family so it's so cool that my voice is heard and i hear my students voices and we're dealing with not just embouchure or lesson plans we're dealing with real people and real problems is that with like moms that can't come to class because of other kids or mm. boyfriend issues you know like these are things that happen every day with our students and we're here to listen with them and develop a solution together not just fight and stick with the syllabus that's what i love about this program we are working with real issues mental health um transportation money moms all this diversity in this school, and it's beautiful. Mm. So that's why I appreciate it about this program. Oh, thank you for sharing that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you're going to find out, and you guys already are, but like a lot of the times I feel like I'm a therapist in my lessons. Mm -hmm. I mean, these are, like you said, Gio, real people with real problems in real lives, and you know, I remember working at TCC last semester and one of my students really wanted her associates so bad, single mom, you know, and was having a rough time. Her mom was basically in ICU and um, not doing very well. And she's a single mom and didn't know, couldn't afford babysitting anymore, you know, for a babysitter for her little boy and didn't want to drop out of my class. And I said, you know, let's figure out a compromise because your situation may not be ideal, but we can make it work. Mm -hmm. You know, there, there are many mm -hmm. roads to getting that associates. It's not just going to be one clear paved pathway. So we found out a compromise. Like we kept the door open. Her little boy sat out, you know, with his coloring book and the mom still got to see her boy and she still got to be in class. And so you're going to find that, you know, as a teacher, you're going to come across these and just seeing already the flexible people and the understanding people that you are is very encouraging and exciting. And it's going to be skills that will definitely bring you much success to your classrooms and studios. Just that open ear and open heart is so important. Um, I wish I would have had that skill and known that when I was a first year teacher. So mm -hmm. you learn <laughs> through trial and error. And so just mm -hmm. recognizing that now at an early age, I think, man, it's going to do wonders for you. 
So, but um, if there's not anything else that you guys would like to share about the assistantship or the pedagogy degree, is there anything else that you just, I don't know, you just want to shout out to the music world or the flute world, something that you got to share? Yeah. One thing that is really cool about Texas Women's University, especially in the flute area, is that every summer or almost every summer, there's the flute pedagogy workshop. So last year we had Valerie Coleman come down, did master classes with her in a non-judgmental safe zone. Mm-hmm. She did a recital and then a flute choir uh, performance with her as well, which was fantastic. And it's just such a great learning environment. And there's so much vulnerability because it is such a safe zone and an open area Mm -hmm. that there's a lot of growth and improvement. And it's just so accepting. Hmm. Yeah. So just these um, marvelous guest artists coming Mm -hmm. in, you know, to the Denton area. A lot is happening in this area, right? I Mm -hmm. mean, there's a huge music scene in this wonderful state of Texas. But just having those guest artists coming in like Valerie Coleman is so inspirational and motivating. And so, yeah, I resonate with a lot of that. She's a wonderful person. Yeah. Yeah. And I think we're all so excited for her new position at Frost School of Music. Yes. Yeah. It's she all is. about the you. It's my alma mater, so I have to. <laughs> Perfect. <Yeah. laughs> That segued very nicely. Yes. So I have notes right here, actually. <laughs> Oh, shoot. There's also one other thing. I, please. Can I mention oh, some, one please. other thing? Something else that they're they're very humble, but they've been involved in this. Um, every All of these students are experiential student scholars, and so they've been doing um, these projects that I think would be really cool if you mentioned a little bit about your, your projects. Yeah. So oh. um, Caitlin, Paula, and David were involved with Jacob Wright, who we mentioned earlier, okay. and in a quartet project, and then Gio was involved with one of our clarinet pedagogy students um, doing a project. So does somebody want to speak a little bit? So uh, with us being, it just so happened that all uh, the four of us, this is before Geo, before we knew we were missing a fifth. (laughs) 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 We were a a quartet. And uh, so Dr. Youngblood and Dr. Lori had approached all of us about doing some kind of research project together because it it was so great that all four of us were here and we couldn't miss this opportunity. And what we we came up with and we actually just finished in time for a TMEA is we went through all of the Texas class one flute quartets on the prescribed music list. And we assessed and went through every single one of them and created a resource guide for band directors, for private teachers, and even for students for them to be able to go through these quartets and actually be successful with them. It begins with a brief introduction to the piece, performance suggestions, we have recording suggestions. But what we did is we broke down the class ones even further into grade levels mm. from advanced, which we, we were calling grade A, intermediate, grade B, and then more novice pieces, grade C, so that band directors and teachers can ap- more appropriately assign music to the level of students that they have. Mm. So they can see, okay, I have a quartet of these students, and maybe they're not the strongest, or maybe they have like two really strong players or one really strong player, what can I give them that's a class one so that they can still be eligible to go to state, Hmm. which is what, you know, every band director wants. So we we went through them all, we graded them, we assessed them, and we have really detailed, a really detailed document on all 26 class one food quartets that we're all really proud of because it was a labor of love. But Mm. our, our goal with that is to be able to help students be more successful in their performances. They, they can come prepared. They know what to expect. They know what areas to watch out for, uh, where to watch out for intonation. They, they have access. They know of what, what good recordings are out there that are going to be good mm-hmm. references. We even included uh, for each piece a glossary of all the, all the terms in, in throughout the score and defined wow. them all. So it's very extensive, and uh, we, we want this to be out there so that band directors can feel more confident in assigning more variety of music. Mm. A lot of times they... You know, they know one or two pieces, and that's what they're comfortable with, and that's what they assign. Um, so there, we've, we discovered a whole lot of really yeah. cool pieces on the list that none of us had ever heard of. Mm-hmm. So we, we want people to explore, and we want people to be successful. Mm-hmm. So that, that was the goal with all of, all of that project. 
And they have had the opportunity to perform and, and present uh, about this at various different places, all the way from the National Association of College and Women Percussion Instructors in Vancouver wow, in the fall nice. to the TMEA Research Poster Session last month nice. in San Antonio. Um, and they also performed at TFS last year. So yeah. you guys have had, uh, you know, some really... It's been eventful. You know, yes. Yeah, it's a really neat opportunity. Yeah, we've had a lot of project. poster session pr- presentation opportunities um, uh, so. Very yeah. cool. Yeah. Yeah, they uh, are humble. They, they are humble. <laughs> they don't mention it all. And like I mentioned right now, Gio is doing something with a, a, you know, a flute clarinet duet thing, mm-hmm. doing some of that as well. So a similar project. Caitlin, if we have any band directors listening, is there a way they can get the document? Yeah, so you can actually shoot me an email at crose, like the flower, crose7 at TWU.edu, and I can send you a PDF of that full document for free. Wow. You sure? It is. (laughs) (laughs) For now. Okay, there you go. Well, we can even put, if it's okay with you and your co-creators, a link on my website so they can just download it. Um, But yeah. That would be great. If you'd like to do that. Sure. Um, But I will definitely put in the show notes her email that she just read off, just in case... Yeah, I think we have a new co-host to Flute 360 because David's just like, where can we find this? Yeah. And it was just like, All the things I don't think about. No, it was perfect. Where can you find that and locate it? It was excellent. Yeah. You could not have done that any better. Um, and that just goes to what we were talking about with that uh, Elizabeth Gilbert, the big magic where I said if an idea is not exposed or come to light or created, it will go somewhere else. I kid you not. I am in a professional flute quartet group of four tech. We had a very similar idea. Oh. I went off to get my doctorate. Somebody went out east. Somebody stayed in the area and somebody went up north. And our group split. Mm. And we're like, that would be so wonderful. If only we had enough time in the day. <laughs> I'm so glad. <laughs> it really, if it's, if it's a good enough idea, it will find creators to manifest it. Yeah. And so thank goodness for your guys' ears and eyes to be open to say, oh, opportunity. And then you're working together to form something that is a beautiful resource for band directors and students and other teachers. So you should be super, super proud of that accomplishment. And especially presenting it at all those different conferences, that's no easy task because the proposals, <laughs> that's, a full, that's a full-time job in yeah. of itself. We've gotten pretty good uh, at writing proposals, which is really nice yes. for any future proposals mm-hmm. outside of you know, school. <laughs> nice. Writing, having that experience. Awesome. And any other projects that you guys want to highlight? Mr. Geo, I see a finger being pointed towards you. It's almost the same idea as theirs, uh, but it's flute and clarinet pieces through consortia. How it differs, it's more condensed and more like a chart form. Okay. So um, not just banders, but even students can just see, oh, this flute duet, this happened at this time. Same kind of concept, that, but not as detailed. Mm. Um, still says tempos, measure um, time signatures, all that stuff. Tricky flute parts, tricky uh, clarinet parts that they might have to worry about, or even like recordings and duration of time. Mm. So the same thing, just in chart form. Oh, very cool. So you're highlighting maybe like a measure, a specific measure that's like, quote unquote, the trickiest rhythm of the piece. So that way it's highlighted to kind of help, um, you know, potential like danger spots or something yeah, like that. Um, or even like if they're trying to, if they're working on 16, oh, second patient. Okay. That was something that we highlighted in that thing. Or if they're only a beginner and can only work with through this range, that's something that's in that chart. Okay. So easy picks for teachers thinking just like, look at the title what it was commissioned for, and see if that fits all those things that they're looking for in a piece. Oh, I see. Yeah. Very similar to like Pellerite, I would think, right? Mm-hmm. The Handbook of Literature, Flute Literature, something yes. like that. Or NFA creates also um, handbooks as yep. well yes. in repertoire. Mm-hmm. And that was yep. that was really the, the, the jumping off point. Got it. Mm-hmm. And then kind of tweaking it to what you guys mm-hmm. 
felt. Yes. Absolutely. Very cool. Oh, awesome. And I think, you know, again, like as educators, like you want your students to succeed and you're giving them what I hear from these projects is you're giving them the correct tools to be yeah. successful, yes. you know, and not yeah. every student is in lessons, unfortunately, right. but if they can kind of see that very clear, maybe like these columns that I'm almost envisioning mm -hmm. as Gio's describing this, it can be almost like a little check box or something just to refer to, to guide them in that repertoire piece. Yeah, that's what I'm hearing. Okay, yeah. this one makes sure. <laughs> <laughs> so is that project available? No, that's in the beginning stages. Okay, yeah. all right. Gio and Kristen are both in their first year, so they're okay. They've been awarded the money and they're starting to work on the project. Now, oh my goodness! So. Well, when it comes to full fruition, yes. uh, please let me know. And even after this air date in April, we can definitely showcase that because I want your hard work to be showcased. I want it to be out mm -hmm. there so the world can enjoy it and use it. Any other projects? Because I would hate to miss something. Those are the big two. Yeah. <laughs> well, that takes up enough yeah. of your time. So, <laughs> Oh, my gosh. Amazing. Well, thank you so much for sharing your pedagogy program. Thank you for sharing uh, lessons you've learned through your assistantships. The department is so just benefited for having you guys here and enjoy your time as a graduate student. <laughs> Don't say, I wish I was somewhere because you'll be there. Yeah, just, you know, take it all in um, small steps. And but yeah, enjoy graduate school because it is so fun. The connections you're making, the tools that you are um, acquiring, the lessons you're learning, it's just this is just the starting point, and I know you guys have very successful careers uh, waiting for you in the near future. So thank you again for everything, and have a wonderful Monday night. Thank you so <laughs> much. Today's episode is sponsored by J&K Productions. They produce all of my episodes from adding the intro and outro music to editing the audio and all post-production needs. Contact them for your next podcast project at jkproductions.media. Thank you for listening to the Flute 360 podcast. For more information, please visit HeidiKBegay.com. And if you enjoyed today's episode, please rate and review in the iTunes store. Let's talk about flute.